and welcome to Fireside Chat number two. Cap ships for fun and profit. Lots so obviously profit. today, yeah, today we're going to talk about cap ships. Oh, big shocker. So, um, yeah, let's, for those that do not play VO currently or have not gotten the wherewithal to build a cap ship, I guess we should go over what is available. Um, we have two uh, player manufacturable cap ships, the Goliath and the Trident Type M. And let's do yeah, let's do a quick looky looky at what they look like. Then I'll read you some specs. So the Goliath shown here. Um, this is the smallest player buildable cap ship, and that runs uh, six hundred fifty thousand armor. Uh, has three turrets, one large port. I think the shields are like around twenty k. I mean, that's not a published spec. That's just a guesstimation. Uh, and 55 grid power. And then this is the Trident Type M. And that is 1 million armor. Four turrets. One large port. Uh, that's roughly 34,000 on the shields. And 125. Um, so these are both... Uh, uh, the the two main player buildable cap ship. Uh, the Golly is uber fast in acceleration, um, where the Trident is heavier armor, a little bit. They both have the same top speed. Uh, the Golly just happens to get to that top speed faster than the Trident does. So that's that's what those look like. Um, how many people in chat have the cap ship? Hello, my name's A Dog. I have a Trident and a Goliath. Uh, I'm Golgo. I got Pearl Trident. All right, and I of course have none at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Jack P. I've got a trident. I don't rock a Goliath, but I could. All right. Yes, all joking aside, yes, I have four tridents and two Goliaths. <laughs> um, <clears throat> God, it feels like an AA meeting. Hi, <laughs> my name. Is, my name is Wash. I have four tridents. <laughs> That's, that's what I was going for. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Now, I'm sure a lot of people who don't have them already um, are curious as to what the big deal is about having a cap ship. Um, so we're going to go over some of the finer points of owning a cap ship, what they're good for, um, which is pretty much everything. Um biggest thing being is well depending on your style of play i guess i mean obviously traders you know you can haul large amounts of cargo um 600 with a golly 800 with a trident uh unless you do the overstuff trick uh in which case you can get 800 out of a golly and 1200 out of a trident um if you are not familiar with the overstuff trick a, where have you been for your entire VO life? Um, basically, and I'll tell you how this works in case people don't know. I'm going to throw out a secret here. Basically, the way you overstuff your Trident or your Goliath is you load it with how many ever EC ships you can load in it. And then you undock from the cap ship station. And then one at a time. You undock with each EC, fly into the station, grab a Behemoth XC, which is 200 CU of cargo, fly it back out, and dock with your cap ship. Oh, so man. then you, yes. <laughs> the illogical magic of VO. Oh, uh, yes. 
I will um, point out that a that a uh, Goliath can actually hold more than that, um, e even more with the overstuffing because when you swap out your ECs and a Goliath, you can also fill in about another, I think it's like another hundred CU or something of stuff. So oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah, the ECs don't take up all the cargo space like they do in a deck. Yeah, you're right. Six totally forgot ECs about that. These are seven hundred fifty cargo in a trident. Yeah, yeah, you that's extra, correct. Yeah, you get extra another 50. 50 on, yeah, another 50 on the Tridents, too. I'm just too lazy to do that extra 50 because I'm just old and lazy. Um, so, yeah, so if you're a trader, that is your big, that is your big thing uh, with getting a cap ship is you can haul tons of cargo. Um, from a combat perspective, the cool thing about owning a cap ship um, is that you have basically free uh, reloads and reps for all your individual fighters, um, which means you can sit in a sector and PvP, and you don't have to leave the sector to to reload or or to get repaired, um, Unless you have a TU mine, TU mines cost money to reload, whether they're in a station or on your on your capture. Um, in game money. In game money, yeah, yeah. Five hundred thousand to reload. Yeah, that's uh, per correct. mine. Yes, five hundred k per mine. Yes. Suggested by yours truly. Oh, I was that you? I'm pretty sure that was. I thought that was Greenwald that suggested that. No, he helped. Yeah, we don't need any more of his help. I'm just saying that out in public. I hope he's listening. Ha ha. Well, uh, you know what? The PCB, <laughs> the PCB update was actually awesome. The PCB is wonderfully oh, no, the OP PCB now. Update is great. Yeah, that PCB update's killer. I killed like four, four or five gollies in uh, in in uh, uh, trade boys the other day. Because of that, it was awesome. Zox lost this try to twice over that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so there's your, there's what it's good for 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 the combat oriented people. Um, you know, you can carry a multitude. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. A multitude of uh, fighters. Uh, yes, Ezra. There was a PCB update about what was it two weeks ago now. Um, where they increased the auto aim, so you can literally now, when you when you shoot a PCB, you can almost be at a ninety degree angle and it will still hit. It's ridiculous, ridiculous accurate now. It works really I, well I with the Gat two. Yeah, it's like the Gat two. If you fire with the Gat two, you're almost like a like like a stronghold queen. Yeah, it's really cool, Ezra. You got to check it out. Oh, that's right. You have to actually log in and play. <laughs> uh yeah so um yeah so you can carry around a, a variety of pvp ships you get free reps and reloads uh so that's your advantage um uh for the combat oriented people to have a cap ship um the the lesser lesser known use um is for killing Leviathans and Queens. And the Hive in general. And the Hive in general, yeah. And this is not something that most people use them for, um, especially since the Stronghold Queens um, got a buff not too long ago, uh, where their top speeds have been increased and their acceleration has been increased. So not very many people will use their cap ship uh, for that type of stuff. Um, I know I personally use mine for killing Levi's. Uh, Jack Lightning uses this for killing Levi's. Lightning mines uh, and hive crits. You could uh, L mine and kill Arclons. You could, yeah, yeah, uh, dropping yeah, dropping L mines and crits. Perfect use of a cap ship because you can literally just sit there and just drop L mines for days and farm noodles and whatever else goodies they're dropping. Standing. You standing. you farm standing. standing, yeah, standing. That's another good thing. 
It's the best way to get heavy in combat XP. You can literally generate a couple million an hour. Uh, Pando, no, you cannot use a P. Well, you can use a PCB on a queen, but it doesn't really do anything because the NPCs don't have the same battery structure that players have, so um, it's not really effective. Using they don't. The cap ships in that in that way is probably one of the more productive things to do you yeah definitely probably, you could probably generate i don't know an entire trident's worth of materials maybe in a week uh actually if you do if you do it right you can actually do it way faster than that um i was like the my first trident uh took me like three months to build the second, third, and fourth, I did those in like 13 days each. And that was from scratch to complete a trident. God damn, like, dude. Once you have one, it's it's so much easier to do all the rest of them. For instance, like uh, myself and Tenny, we went and farm. We literally generated 1,200 SSS in fucking 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's stupid fast. It's stupid. I did an entire I did an entire trident's worth of SSS in one night. It's very feasible. It, it, yeah, it's stupid and, easy. And it's not that painful either. No, it literally it isn't. You like literally you hit your mind limit, park back in the trident, and then and then go, you know, go That's screw fine. off until it's been thirty minutes and, and the L mines have all died and you come back and lay another set. Just keep right. going. Have someone with their another cap ship come and just fly by with scoops. And just yeah, like... yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's see. Dentech wants to know, what's the point to owning more than one? Okay, um, I will answer that as I do own more than one. Uh, and... Bragging rights. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not really. It's mostly, <laughs> it's mostly I'm just too lazy to fly one cap ship all over the universe. I literally have one at every cap ship station. Because I'm too lazy to fly the slow ass things around the universe. That is it. That is the legit truth. That's why I have four of them. Last night's what? war against Iten, if, if we weren't using that tactic, we would have lost. It was vital. So yeah, that's why you own more than one. If you know, I mean, unless you like trolling around the universe at, you know, 140 meters per second. I I personally don't have the patience for that, so I have more than one capture. Um, or if you're Pando, then you're hauling ridiculous amounts of cargo to build more cap ships. Um, all right, hold on, Ezra. Let me see what this is. Oops, hold on. Let me look. Let me read this link, Ezra. I didn't. I haven't seen this yet. So unfortunately, you can't do things like have your dent follow you around the universe. It'd be awesome if you could, but it's been suggested, but the devs have never implemented that. If they ever do, that would be a bonus for having multiple cap ships. Um, would be excellent. Let me find the line about, uh, what's his name, uh, Incarnate, uh, what he said about tridents. It's pretty good. Okay, Ezra, I'm not. I'm not sure. I get your question. Okay, yeah, I know about the new jump mechanic. What do you mean about the hive cell? I don't. I never understand your question. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I know. You, I I read that thread. Um, he wants to put a suggestion in. I think about, but it, it doesn't really do a deal with cap ships. He just wants to make it so. Um, like uh, it, that um, something's damaged. You know how we how the new update went through. Right, right. So if like. Yeah, he wants to make it so that cell would be um exempt from um. The damage oh, issue on like EC eighty eights and uh, oh. and like revenants. Interesting. That That's actually might, that act, actually that might be cool because that would yeah. be motivation for for people to use the hive cells because yeah. literally the noobs are the only ones that use them right now. It makes sense for the hive to not be able to PCB too. Kind yeah, of actually, that's actually that's a cool idea. Yeah, but post that. I'll tell totally you plus one that dude. Totally I think it's, yeah, I think he po did post it. Definitely post it as its own. Separate. Yeah, post it as yeah, definitely post it as its own suggestion. I'll totally plus one that. That's a cool idea. I like that.
Okay, so we've covered um, uh, the main things you can do with a capture. So, you know, obviously trade, uh, combat reload, rep platforms. Um, you know, if you're, I know a lot of the smaller guilds maybe only have one or two cap ships in them, so they're that's cool. You pile a bunch of your noobs in, and you want to go start a fight with somebody. You guys all got a place to rep and reload. Um, um, you know, larger guilds like like one where we have multiple tridents, or I ten where they have multiple tridents, or TGFT where they have multiple tridents. Um, you know, those guys. Uh, we roll in with multiple tridents. They roll in with multiple tridents. Um, our tridents and golly combos, which works together great. Um, I think great. You guys in gray have a couple now, don't you? You've got a dent, and Tenny's got a golly. And I'm sorry, who else? Him. Oh, okay. And yeah, so yeah, there's there's guilds where you have multiple cap ships where, you know, you pile you know three or four other people in there, and you guys literally we can you know we either have really huge sector fights or we just take over sectors for a while. So, <sighs> large scale PvP is one of the core, you know, golden gooses of that shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember when I first built my Trident, and we used to go, we used to have B8 throwdowns with ITAN, like, it was like R8 Tridents versus their six or seven, how many ever they had at the time active, and we just have Trident throwdowns in B8, yeah, that was great. I love that shit. Um, alright, Ezra, most new people seem to quit after doing their golly dent builds. Um, you know... Here's the thing. I, I I don't get that. I, I, and it happens a lot. You're totally right. A lot of people quit after they build their golly or their net. And I just, I'm like, why? I'm like, that's a shitload of work to go through and then stop playing. That makes no sense to me. A lot, well, of-, a lot of people consider it like end game content. They're like, I built the dent. And then, I mean, I know like, okay, when you and I did our dents, M7 was still, you know, a serious <laughs> Issue the where you had to travel like 32,000 uh, meters every single time to move every single part, and it was time consuming and um, dangerous. It, it, was, it was ridiculous. And uh, it, it, you would actually get burnout if you were like cr- trying to knock out a, a capital ship. You were, you, you'd you get it, you'd build it, and then it was like, well, what's more yeah. to do in VO? And so then you would yeah. take a break, and then that break would turn into basically quitting VO. Well, wait, wait. It's it's like I've I've basically always said of you know after a while you're paying basically ten dollars a month to hold down the uh, uh, the tab key right and then if you got that on a bind um, well you're basically just watching the screen for hours on end which is really no fun because it's it's a hell of a lot of hauling and that part at, at M7 would just made it worse I yeah for the okay. Time, it's uh, that people get handouts. Like, for instance, I, out of maybe the 10 or so cap ships I've handed out, maybe one or two are still around. Yeah, see, that's the thing. is nobody that, yeah, That's a good point, dude. Very good yeah. point. Um, we have, we, there's a big problem, and this is, this is a very general statement. I'm not naming any names. We do have a big problem with people that just want shit handed to them, and they're not, they don't want to do any work for it. Like I like when Jack and I were building our tridents, like I wasn't even gonna ever build a cap ship, and I took a I took a break for like a month because I was dealing with work bullshit. And we had like an intense project, and I came back from that, and he's like, "Oh, dude, I started on my trident." And I'm like, "Oh shit! All right, uh, I'll build one too." And and we literally spent three months hard, building. Hard, right? Yeah, I mean, I put three months of work in that. You're damn right, I'm flying that thing around and blowing shit up with it. That's the whole point of building. It. You know, I, I you invest and, in that time. There's something there. The people that just get the handout, they're like, eh, "Fuck it." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's a big problem. I see people all over. You know, news all. Over, oh, somebody give me ten million credits. Somebody do this. Somebody give me that. It's like, dude, 
work for it. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, yeah, I have, I have six cap ships total on this one account and granted, I don't fly them all, all the time, but I have them available if I want them. And I do use them on for, for various things at various times. Um, like one thing that like Dirty Or told me when I first started doing my tr- dent, he was like, he told me to do the dent build. It's something in, in your spare time, not like a focus thing, because you focus all your time on it, it becomes like unfun. Vo can become unfun, and now you love yes. manual. Yes, yeah, holding down that tab key, fun times. Yeah, but see now, I, I don't, I know Jack and I went hard balls to the wall when we started building our decks because it was two of us doing it together. Like I, I just remember spending entire days. All we were doing was hauling uh, silk steel from Verasi to to Pell and back. I mean, and it sucked. And, and when we finished, that first thing I want to do is fly thing around and blow up every goddamn thing I can find. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't get how people build a, a cap ship and then quit playing. Yeah. I mean, there was. I know there's. There's two dudes that were in, um, um, shit. What was that guild to quit playing because we locked him out of F6? Um, oh, shit. Where's Noth when I need her? Um, um, were they the, uh, the Chinese guys or were they the other dudes? No, no, no. It was, um, USP. No, um, uh, Sark, no, not Sark. No, not Sark. The other ones, the other ones that were a split off of TRI. Um, um, well, there's Sark. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, the, 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 the other guys, yeah. Um, yeah, Noth and I locked them out of F6 for like three weeks. Like they built her golly as like so that they could use F6. Aqua, Aqua, yes, thank you. Yeah, like they built, so we had them locked out of F6, and then they built her a golly so that we'd let them use F6. And then they built like two tridents, and literally, after they built those two tridents, boom, they stopped playing. Like literally, they built two brand new tridents, and both of those players immediately stopped playing. I'm like, what you know, the hell? You know what's the sad part, though? Everybody, all the membership under them, they rely on that, not leadership, but the more experienced players. Once those guys are gone, that little, like, quote unquote, new generation of pilots, they quit too. They're bored. Right? Yeah. They have nobody helping them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's like, you know, and, and it's just, it's, it's amazing to me that someone would put that much work into something and then quit play. It's just, I, I don't know. It just doesn't compute to me, but maybe it makes sense to other people. I don't know. Well, okay. Well, like, um, uh, for instance, I, I quit VO for about seven years, and then I saw the newsletter uh, about five years ago now, and I came back because, you know, I thought stuff was happening. <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, they, 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 they sold me with the, um, you know, the, the nice, the, you know, nice, uh, pretty pictures and um, uh, artwork, right? And uh, yeah, so I'm. I mean, like, like, uh, to be honest, my trident was a handout from somebody. Uh, I got that trident. I used it for about six months to fly around, you know, the world, blowing stuff up. And then I was like, well, you know, this is really all there is to VO. So, like, I, I, I quit for a while, but. Um, so, I mean, like, I think perhaps, perhaps a lot of these people will come back when there's more content, but that's probably another discussion for another time, so. Yeah, see, I, do, I, I, I don't think they will. I, I, I mean, I can't imagine, like I said, I mean, maybe it's just me. I just can't fathom putting that amount of work into something in a game and then not playing it anymore. I yeah. I mean, I, I, that just, I, that doesn't compute to me in, in any form of logic. That just, that's. Definitely, this is a special kind of game. It's really not for the casual player. You, you really do have to invest some time in it. 
Yeah, this yeah, this is yeah. definitely a game that takes that's an investment in time. If you don't love this game, yeah, without question, without question. If you don't love this game, you're not going to stick around, no matter what you do. Um, that's a good point, Ezra. Um, yeah, the combat people usually aren't the ones that quit. It's usually the traders. Yeah, you're right. But once, once VO has an actual economy and there's, I don't know, there, there, there's more to do other than fight, then I think a lot of these people will actually have a, 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 uh, a reason to stick around, I guess. But un until then, it's just you're piling infinite credits on top of, yeah. well, infinite credits. <laughs> High inflation, no real way to make a permanent impact on the universe. Exactly. Oh yeah. no, there's totally a way to make a permanent impact on the universe. Plop your ass in F six and prevent people from building capsules. <laughs> well I'm just wait. I'm just saying when they took away the old M7 station so that it was super easy to build cap ships, that's when I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm just going to lock down F6 because you little bastards don't know what it's like to haul 32,000 meters moving one part and then have to go another 13,000 from the exit dock to the entrance dock to put the next part in. I actually think a bunch of RBH is actually being built in uh, Bractus M14 now because of the uh, F6 lockdown. Yes, well, you know. That's why we're holding down all these three stations so hard. Yeah. No, she kind of liked that idea the first time I brought it up. I'm like, hey, look, we could do this. And she's like, ooh, that's evil. I like it. I'm like, well, okay, fair enough. Okay. Panda. Um, okay, so this brings up an interesting point. Yeah, I know. You want fucking Capellas, dude. Give it a rest. It's been two years. We know what you want, a Capella. I've seen you drive a Trident. I don't want to see you fly something that big. Sorry. <laughs> um, but this brings up an interesting point. And, um, and I noticed this, like, I, like, I read the forums all the time, and I read things a couple of different times just, you know, for the in-between-the-line shit. And Karnak said something the other day um in in a post that he made um that led me to believe that there may be a chance that in this new 2.0 universe that's being worked on that cap ships may just be purchasable i'll quit immediately and it, it he didn't come out and say that it's just the way he worded his post and maybe it was not intentional and maybe i'm reading things into it but immediately in the back of my brain, my my subconscious went, "Hey, we might be able to purchase Terrans and not have to build shit anymore." <laughs> well, wait, he he did mention something about I believe it was uh, Goliaths that they could perhaps be purchasable uh, for like for for uh, real money in the uh, future. <clears throat> that, see, that that I'm not I'm not cool with that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's a whole thing right there. Yeah. Real, real cash purchases should be, you know, the subscription, liveries, things that can't actually affect gameplay. That's what I'm cool with cash purchases on. You know, just extra fluff, basically. Like, I mean, I have the I have that Type One livery for my Trident, and yeah, it was forty bucks, but you know what, my Trident looked temp, and it's totally worth it to me. But it doesn't affect the gameplay. It doesn't fly any different or do any more damage than any other trident. So, but people being able to roll in and just purchase shit with real cash, you know, that can make an impact on the game. I'm not cool with that. That's that's shitty in my book. I don't know. I don't know how anybody else feels about that. That's my, you know, that's my personal opinion. Well, like, uh, I, I put all insane. this time and effort in building, and then someone can come in and do that. I'm just gone. So yeah, see, yeah, I agree. I, I feel the same way. I'm like, you know, yeah. it, it, if you can purchase, if you have to save up in game credits, you know, so you're doing game work to, to, to buy it with in game credits, that I'm cool with, you know? Yeah. Too broken for that. That's the way I see that. 
Yeah, and that's think you know. About it, but, think about it like Eka or me that we could just drop money on anybody. It just ruins the purpose. It'd be a uh, that top one percent who will run the game no matter what. Right, and I think that's why it hasn't done that yet. Is because they're the dynamic economy is supposed to be coming in the new verse, along with the expansion of the you know uh, uh, how many ever more systems we're supposed to be getting. I think he's smart enough to realize that he's got to drop a majority of that all at one time for it to be effective, but still give the newer players a chance to compete against people that have big ass bankrolls like that. Right. Um. That's why I said I think it's going to be interesting. On top of that, the whole being able to capture a capture thing that he mentioned a couple times on the forums. Oh, that that sounds cool as shit. That would be cool, yeah. I wonder how that would be. building these things. Oh, yeah, I'd be all about stealing some capture dude. That would give, you know, real purpose to piracy and anti-piracy. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. Like, oh, haha, uh, I stole your credit. Neener, neener, neener. <laughs> That's way cooler to steal it than to blow it up. I mean, you know, you know. I mean, I love watching people rage when I blow up their cap ship, especially when it's full of parts. But being able to steal it while it's got parts in it, that'd be even better. <laughs> I mean, call me an evil, maniacal bastard, but I'm sorry, but that just sounds like epic fun. The closest we had to stealing tridents was stealing the name. Oh, yeah, trust me, the, the, the name stealing thing, I love that. That made my day so much better. Uh, okay. Oh, I just got some stuff here. Hold on. Now, Badger, that would be... Uh, um, now see, that would be... Making that something purchasable would be cool because it's... It's got a specific role... It's more of a um, – the Badger is more of an escort slash anti-cap ship, ship for lack of a better word, uh, because it's got lots of armor but no shields. And, like, when I came up with the Badger concept, I'm not even going to lie, I totally ripped that off from the Expanse. Like – I, I was watching an episode of The Expanse, and I watched them. They were fighting some, some um, the stealth alien ship, and the the stealth alien ship was was screw it was fucking them up with rail guns, and the Rosinante just like flipped around and just like let go with like six gat turrets and just ripped it open, and I went, ooh, I'm like, we need a cap ship like that in VO. That would be awesome. <laughs> you know, four gat turrets you know, with a fully, you know, like 180 degree rotation would be freaking epic. So that's that's where the badger came from. I'm not even gonna lie. I didn't make that up. I totally stole that from the expanse. Totally stole that from the expanse. And if you're listening incarnate, you can pretend that you didn't hear that and put it in denial so you can create that for us. Thanks, buddy. Love you. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, like there's a uh... There's a, a, a certain niche area that I don't think has been touched yet in that we have like cap ships and we have fighters, but we're going to have like gunships or um, right. corvettes. That's the word, corvettes. corvettes. <clears throat> yeah, like like when when we got the rail guns and, and then we got 180 degree turrets, that was literally the closest we have ever been to having cap ship combat. Yeah. And it was so much fun. Well, except for the first three days of the Goliath when it had something <laughs> like, what, seven oh, small ports? Yeah, Actually, yeah. Uh, it was only the first day, but yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was brutal. There's still videos of that around. Yeah, the, the first day of the Goliath was awesome. Having all those ports was freaking brutal. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, here's a cool, interesting fact for those that don't read the wiki. There is a nine 
Smallport Trident <laughs> that is available to the guides and the dubs. They never fly it around, but it does exist. I think it's only got like two or three hundred cargo, but it does exist. So there is a high fire power, high firepower trident out there. What about in the PCC? Could you obtain? No, it's not in the PCC either. I've looked. Trust me. Yeah, you have to have guy powers even there to get access to those fun things. Yeah, trust me. The first thing I did when I got test server access was go, "Cool, can I get a Terran on here?" No, fuck. So, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely... Uh, I, I'm looking forward to some of this cool new stuff that's that's supposed to be happening. Uh, uh, and CapShip, you know, expansion on their roles and how they're used and what they can do and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. So... No one flies it because it's nine small ports, dude. Come on, Pando. L legitimately, what do you think would happen if I had access to a nine small port trial? <laughs> you sold every single one of my infants that ever exist. I would literally be snow plowing with Widowmakers through the entire universe. <laughs> That's why nobody can fly one around. Okay. Same reason none of us can have super buses. Because we would all literally fly around and destroy everyone else. Ray was flying around last night and got a few screenshots. Oh, and his super bus? Yeah. He, I caught him one day. He is, there's, a, there's another one called the, what is it, the, uh, the short bus. That's a half of an EC-88. It's hilarious. <laughs> I saw him one time in that, and I'm like, no way, dude. That's awesome. He, uh, he, he used to fly around in the... Uh... Bunchy UFO, but um, yeah, like I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I, I would like to have guide powers just so I can see the list of ships that I don't have access to. That's hmm. all I really care about. I just want to see what ships I can't fucking get. I'd never be a guide, I'd never get to play VO again. I just want to, I just want to see that list of cool shit that's like, oh, I can't access this, I can't access. This. Damn it! Everyone should be a guide so we can all fight each other in these cool ass ships. <laughs> and that's a request for the arena. <laughs> yeah, now that would be cool. Like, now, uh, people have brought up this arena thing. Obviously, we're diverging from our topic, but the the arena thing. If you could get, if every ship was open, you know, like you could get super buses and whatnot. Then it would be cool, because then it would be like Unreal Tournament inside of VO. But it, is it possible to build a dent entirely on your own? Yeah. Tons of people have done that, dude. Uh, some people who have actually done it all on their XC, even as in this past 12 months, I've seen someone do a build just XC. They... They didn't get anyone to haul for them. They did it all themselves. That's ballsy. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's just say they were paying off pirates left and right. No, you know, I mean, you basically have to at that point. I mean, you know, I mean, you got to figure uh, CD built the first one, you know, by himself, <laughs> by, by herself, <laughs> or whatever. XC only, savage. Yeah, I mean... It's been done multiple times. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, Zeha built his trident all by himself with no help. He built his all by himself with nothing but an XC. And let's see, who else? Uh, I'm pretty sure Rogue built her golly without any help. Um, who else could I trying to think of someone else that I know is because there's some um, people that are just stubborn and they don't want help. And I just want to be like, okay, be that way. Honestly, uh, there should be a special badge for anyone who's done it without help. Uh, you gave me some uh, samouflage, but I've built uh, two Goliaths without help. Well, 
I mean, I oh, kind Dylan of for my... Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I didn't realize. Just about the entire universe helped me in my build. Dude, I'm, when I built the second trident, I literally just was like, I, I sat here one day and I went, you know what? I want another trident. I want to see how fast I can do this. <laughs> and when I ripped through that bitch in 13 days, I was like, I'm like, holy shit, this is so much faster when I don't have to rely on anybody else and I don't have to be stuck with XCs. It is so retardedly faster. Then I was like, well, hell, I'll build two more. Hmm. And I think, let's see, I already built. I have, I'm trying to remember, I'm pretty sure I had, I think I had three before the Goldies came out. And then, yeah, I had, I had three of the dents before the Gollies came out, and the Gollies came out, and I built the two Gollies, and I decided I didn't like them, so I built another Trident. To what Pando just said, I remember hauling my um, reactor all the way to M7, but right Oops. before um, the big update, um, the station update came out for it. I think I had Void hunting me that night. I'm pretty sure you had a bunch of people hunting you that night. Do you need... Okay, Dentech, what do you mean exotic bot drops? It's, I mean, it's it's SSS and Aggies and Noodles. That's, I mean... Well, there's also Leviathan drops... Um. Decision network. Uh, network. Yeah, yeah, the different networks. There's, I think there's like genetic networks. Yeah, but you don't need any of those in capture builds. That that we don't know. I mean, it, they might be required for a Capella build or something because it's so big. I. It would be nice to get some new, un, like new unique parts just for the Capella build and the S and P or whatever's coming out that would require the Biotin kills. I'm not gonna lie. And don't take this personally, Pando, but I swear to God, I hope that I hope that the Capella comes out and you can just buy it with game credits. An absurd amount of game credits. Okay. Just so I can watch Pando have a heart attack for all the parts that he's stockpiling. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of a dick move, but I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> There was a guy before Tridents came out who who stockpiled something like fifty thousand pieces of scrap metal, thinking that they were going to be built on scrap metal. <laughs> and, then, and then when when it was uh, uh, SSS, he was like, "Fuck this," and just quit. <laughs> Isn't that Basil left off like of scrap? Oh, what was his name? I, I actually think that when a cap ship blows up, it shouldn't just drop scrap metal. It should drop cap ship um, scrap metal. They could be farther used for like another kind of cap ship build. Yeah, refining it, yeah. Yeah, Solid. that would be cool. Or you have an ever so low chance of getting a cap ship. Yeah, see, now that's my thing. I Yeah, that, that like, when you blow up a cap ship, especially a, another player's cap ship, you should totally get more than just, you know, whatever the BS cargo drop is. And the 20 script. Oh. Like, you know, you should be able to pull an engine out of that. Or right, there should be a, a hulk of debris that less gets left behind. And or, yeah, or some kind of a... Way more expensive. Or an internal or an external bulkhead. I mean, something, you, you know? Fucking RBH. Don't leave it Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's, there should and, be more, and more it can things. be a rare drop. I mean, we're not, we wouldn't be asking for one in a thousand. I don't give a fuck. One in a hundred, something. So, though, I, I know why they haven't totally done it yet because they know that a bunch of us are just going to start slash exploding our, um, our dents, trying to get free shit to build more dents. Jack, you weren't supposed to say anything. Damn it. That's why I bring up damn insurance. It. Insurance should scale. It was originally designed to scale way higher, but it's just 500k static. 
Yeah, that's that's correct, and that yeah, you're, you're right. It should definitely scale. It shouldn't be just like you can just go by and it should be you know just fifty thousand. Yeah, well, the, and I see the problem with that is that as soon as it starts scaling, people that lose cap chips all the time, <clears throat> TGFT, um, <laughs> will just stop flying them, or they'll fly them at like the most insane hours when nobody else is around. And so, as few cap chips as we see now, we'll see even fewer. That's that's I guarantee you. That's why Incarnate hasn't scaled that insurance thing up. You have a point there. And they've always made, like, you know, ships are cheap, cap ships are cheap. They always want you to come out and Use life them. is cheap in VO. The only thing that's expensive in VO is time. So the idea is just to get you out there to keep re-engaging and re-engaging. And I understand that as well. Uh, so I'm just saying right now, I'm actually clearing criticals in case we do a cap ship Leviathan. Where at? The uh, Leviathan is in um, uh, M4 uh, Sedina. I think Black and I have cleared all the crits. I'm about, I'm about to do a flyby. Okay, so let's... All right, so let's... Getting back on topic. Um, so the 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 the, the two big things um, that I still wanted to touch on um, are the turrets and just an overall impact of cap ships on the game. Mm, the turrets because we have um, we have a lot of people. I like that they're not god moded anymore. I like that they actually blow up and stay blowed up now. The um, we have a, quite a few people that are very hostile against cap ships even existing. And why? That well, that's I mean, one because they can't take them out with a single fucking X one. <clears throat> Patriot goes <clears throat> and I mean it's it's like okay they they don't some of these people don't grasp the concept of you don't have to be able to kill everything that you see right. I can't kill the Leviathan with an X1 I'm yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Why should you be able to take out a, a a capital ship? I mean, you know. So that's, and then there's a lot of people that you know say the cap ships ruin the game. I, I don't see that as the case. Personally, I think it's just uh, insecurity in their own abilities that they can't, uh, you know, accomplish something. So they're just, uh, you know, pushing that on. They're just projecting that on other people. See, that's, yeah, that's, my theory is, like, if you're too lazy to build a cap ship or you don't want to invest that kind of time, that doesn't mean somebody else shouldn't have one. And, and if you're not willing to invest that kind of time, then you shouldn't be able to blow one up with a simple, you know. Exactly. You know, I'm sorry, but my response to that is, fuck you. Either build one well, or the, shut the fuck up. If you can't organize well, I mean, four or five people to build one, then you should be able to organize four to five people to blow one up. And if you can't do that, fuck off, bro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and literally, it, two people can take out a trident. Two people with Greyhound can take out a fucking trident. Because Jack and I have done it. We've done it to Greenwall a couple of times. Okay, you guys did it to me. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, we did it to a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. It doesn't take that much. I mean, obviously, you're gonna have people that just run right for a cap ship station, but yeah. one it, of the, it, the you know uh, uh, you know arguments that come out there is that VO is supposed to be a purely Twitch based environment, uh, um, and that that's where people have always you know experienced it instead of being like 
Eve, which is a capship environment for the most part. I really haven't played Eve that much, but it, that's what it seems to be. And and, and so people they don't want to see like VO lose that Twitch base and, and end up into being point and click. And I think it's more of a paranoia because it's always going to be Twitch based. It just allows you to be. You can rep and reload on it really quick in B8, and you can have you can experience that Twitch based combat, and then you can experience hauling as well in uh, on, on a massive scale. Okay. Literally, literally, the only reason I ever got good at combat is because of capture docs. I got like good people like Seager, Nahan, like people that, that knew combat. We just sat next to the dock and went to twenty percent a thousand times. For me to do that, any any other method would have cost me too much money and too much time, and I wouldn't have had this much fun. I wouldn't have gotten to the ability of I have today of Twitch combat without it. Now here's and here's here's my counter argument to that is until any of these people have actually gone head to head with another cap ship in a like a full on cap ship to cap ship combat. It's it, trust me. It's still Twitch based. It takes a little more pre thinking because you know tridents don't move as fast as a Valk, or they don't they don't accelerate as fast as a Greyhound. So you got to think a little bit more ahead. But it's still Twitch based combat. Right. That's like everybody bitched about me using railguns. You have no idea how fucking hard that was. I mean, hard as shit to aim those things. Even with even with them all pointing forward. For me to consistently hit a target was hard as shit. I remember that. When but it's still, it was fun, you know? And you, you, like, you had to be able to guess the angle and, and adjust for the angle that the other person was going. That's, 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 not, that, that's Twitch combat, dude. I mean, it's not like instantaneous Valkyrie jumping around in a circle around a prom Twitch, but it's still Twitch combat, which right. Eve doesn't do. Ability-based. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not turn based bullshit like Eve is. It's still Twitch, re, you know, reaction, action, reaction combat. Just because it's slightly slower because the ships move slightly slower doesn't mean it's any less fun or any less applicable. I mean, the majority of people still run around with cap swarms on their decks. I mean, for fuck's sake. I mean, I get where. I, I get that that's not fun. It's like, oh, ooh, look, you have homing missiles. Woo-hoo. I run triple firecrackers on my Goliath. That's hilarious. Firecrackers are the coolest turret ever, just to annoy the shit out of people. I agree. Ugh. Oh, all right. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's... I, I, I'm guessing the majority of us here then pretty much concur with the whole... Yes, tridents are, are cap ships are not a not a bane on the game. It's depending on circumstance, it, like how you guys have described. They either can be useful or extremely cancerous. How, how are they cancerous? Like I said, it's depending on how they're used. Like if a guy just sits there in a trident spamming swarms all day and B8 ruining the fun of everybody then okay, okay. Well, I, I, well, let me just let me just actually discuss that. I mean incarnate actually made a post on the forums is like you can just move to another sector right as B8 was you know an unofficial you know PVP mecca basically it, it's not like official and and there's like no reason and this, to to worry about that too much the other thing is that you can to shield a trident and a golly really, really easily once you get good at it. And and, and if you're willing to you die do doing it as well. You could do it and, a and, hog, one storm, one gem. And yeah, and, and once and once it's just shielded, everyone who is being bothered by that trident or, or, or Goliath will can can plink at it from a distance with stingrays and things. And then that Trident is either going to leave the sector or it's going to explode, and then everyone will enjoy the fireworks because blowing up dents is hilariously fun. Yeah, like I like the here here is irony. So I'm calling people out now. So well, Iron Lord, po- yeah, Iron Lord posted on the forums complaining about um 
people sitting in B8 and swarming, which I find hilarious because not two months before that, somebody else posted in the forums bitching about him sitting in B8 spamming swarms. And to both people, I said the same thing. It's like, you know what? There's no law that says you have to sit in B8 and do PvP. Right. <laughs> yeah, if, if someone actually wants to PvP with me and I like you, that's the kind of thing. If I'm going to do a 1v1 PvP, I usually have to like somebody because otherwise I'm just a combat guy, like mass destroy, destruction nationalist. Um, I usually go to an empty sector to do it, and then no one's there to watch you. I mean, no one's there to bother you. It's perfect because it's so many empty sectors all over the universe. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, um, yeah. It's not like we're running out of space to have fucking PVPs at. I mean, for Christ's sakes. I was swarmed by a cap ship uh, just now, going through a wormhole sector, and uh, yeah, uh, I I was still alive. It wasn't it wasn't a it wasn't a big deal at all. Ooh, hell! I'm fighting a guy right now. Oh, was that my TGFT alt? Uh, it could be. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was probably somebody else, maybe in this call. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah. So I guess we're probably all on the same page here that you know people that bitch about capture are clearly people that are either a too lazy to build one or B, don't understand how to actually fly one. Oh, wait, you know. But that, I, yeah, that's... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, J-Dog. Um, like, you know, I get the argument that they are kind of, you know, halfway implemented, but at the same time, it's, you know, like, that's, that's not an excuse not to build one, so... <clears throat> yeah, and they're easy to yeah. kill. I mean, that's the thing is... It doesn't take, like I said, two Greyhounds, you can kill a cap ship. Oh, um, uh, John Bergman actually had a quote the other day, uh, well, from, from a while ago, of he basically said they're essentially, uh, essentially glorified cargo haulers. Literally. Uh, Multiple docks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With 800 <clears throat> CU cargo space. Yeah, they're little, they're little baby movable stations. Yep. Like the the biggest asset they have is that you can wrap and reload for free on. Them. That's all. So, basically, I used mine for a long, long time. When I first got mine, that's basically what I did. Used it as a mobile dock. Hell, until Wash showed me how to use turrets, that's basically what I did. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like, I mean, the whole, that's the, a, a, a cap ship is not effective unless you can use all the turrets on it at one time. I mean, that's how it's designed to be used. The, 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 I mean, it, unless you have all four, all four turrets going, it, it's not even close to reaching its potential of use. Because that's how it was designed to be used. I know I mean, you actually say that was designed how to be used. I actually don't think they actually thought that's how it was going to be used. That's like the natural design of it, like like the engineering design. That yeah, correct, but I don't really. I can the dev could totally you know tell me I'm wrong, and but but I don't think they actually decided that that's how it was going to be used. Well, I mean, it, you got to admit it's way more effective with four turrets than it is without. Oh, definitely. I'm, I mean, I'm using four new turrets right now that kill a uh, queen in Lantos. I never tried using four gat turrets on a trident. Oh, yeah. Four gat turrets on a trident is fucking awesome. Yeah, it, it looks, looks like uh, Blue Rain. It's wonderful. It does. It looks like Blue Rain. It's <laughs> fucking awesome. Especially if you put a GAT on the front, like an HV. What you need is those, um, what's it called? Um, the ones we see on escorts. Those GAT turrets. Yeah, those are actually capital turrets, I think. Yeah, those are capital Gatlings. 
that we don't have access to. You know, but I would actually suggest that we do get access to them, but they can only be equipped on cap ships. Oh, I, I would I would assume it'd be like any other capital weapon where it's got the twenty five grid minimum. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's the easy way to do it. I mean, you know, that's the whole point of the grid power is to keep it off of regular ships. Yeah. Although that doesn't explain how the convoy moths can carry them, but you know. Hmm. Convoy moths are special. Yeah, as we as we know, logic does not apply to VO. Like our own moths have twenty three HP. We can't really equip them. The um, convoy moths, by default, come equipped with two cap goths in the front and three Gatling turrets. Yeah, and that's Which yeah. is insane. Yeah. I remember um, there was actually a thing, there was an update that came out about a couple months ago, and I think Ray or Incarnate forgot to disable a particular mission, and it allowed us to spawn bots in sectors. Oh, yeah, when that, yeah, there was that mission that, that got unlocked that shouldn't have been on, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Damn, this thing ever, I just spawned a whole bunch of mods in V8. And let them kill people. Yeah, that's a that's a, supposed to be a guide only mission for spawning ship for entertainment. The the, the funniest bug the, the funniest bug I've ever seen was uh, sun flares, but something changed in them that they had the tracking ability of gems. <laughs> so for, for about half an hour, <laughs> you, you could you could shoot sun flares and they just like track people and it, it was hilarious. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Oh, shit. Is, is that a Nihilus that I hear? Nope. <laughs> oh, I didn't think so. It didn't sound cagey enough to be Nihilus. Man, no, Chef. I don't know what you mean, man, but, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, so what are your thoughts there, Mr. Nihilus? Um, what's the what's the topic? Um, why cap ships are awesome and people that don't have them suck. Well, <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know what? Hold on, I need you to confirm something because people were doubting me earlier. Is there or is there not a nine small port trident? That, that you have access to as a guide. Um, <clears throat> you can neither nor confirm nor deny this I information. Deny I mean, not that you're allowed to fly it, but it does exist. That's all. That's all I need to know is I need the confirmation that it exists because people were doubting me earlier. Dude, well, put it this way. Um, there's a shitload of like assets and different ship types that exist, but they're just not they're not polished. You know, they're not like uh, balanced and not game tested and what all that good stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, there's there's a ton of shit that's made. Um, can you confirm or deny? You know, whether these are like, you know, entirely new design, or are we just talking like gray box? Half freshed out. Yeah, that's a, that's what I'm saying. I'm just I'm just making just a like you could probably think of something, some type of ship variant in your head, and they have some type of something that loosely matches that already already kind of created. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like the ships that we have in universe are like an intended. Uh, it's like a, it's yeah. They they've like worked out the balance of all the ships, you know, and it's it's at a good place, you know, a manageable place, you know. Mm. Like if you just start throwing all kind of different ship types in the mix, you don't really, I don't know. You kind of got to drop. Yeah, yeah. You kind of got to plan it out properly, you know. Mm. 
Yes, Pando. Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch that conversation. No, not not really beta access. That's not a good way to think about it. Like, if like they have stuff in development right now, I'm sure we don't have access to that, you know? Yeah, like like the wash variant pterodon. <laughs> All rep getting turrets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Conan gives you one, but it can't be powered at all. But I mean, I, the stuff that we're talking about, I think we all have access to this on the test server. I no. tried going to the um, Devilopia in the test server, and it wouldn't let me dock. No, oh, it doesn't let you dock. Okay. No, you gotta, you you have to have guide powers uh, to access it on either server. I've already okay. tried. That was, that was the first thing I tried doing when I got my test server access. I was like, whoa, special ships. Oh, no, disappointment. Yeah, I've tested out, like, trying to, you know, take some of those ships out and, like, try to make an event around them. But, like, they are not for player consumption. Like, not for not for uh, like user like yeah they're not fleshed out at all like it's really difficult to fly them they're not yeah they're not very practical ships not to not to do any type of like what what uh, what we were trying to do we were trying to plan like a, an event around taking out one of those ships and then like spawning some other ships with the, you know. It, it, but yeah, it was just too difficult to even fly those ships. Don't those Apollo ships go like 500 meters a ship? I mean, some of them, like they have, I think they have pictures of this one out in the, on the internet somewhere, but uh, they have like a, a UFO ship that. Uh, they have the, um, the Bunchies UFO. Yeah, Bunchies, yeah. Yeah, that guy. And then the way, yeah, it yeah, it goes, it goes too fast. It goes too fast. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not like flyable, it's not manageable. If you get them out of imagine. So it's the Tesla of 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 VO space. Pretty right? much, dude. It's pretty much like that. It's not, yeah. Like if you if you have a pretty good feel for how ships fly generally. This is just this ship's just like okay no this isn't this isn't right it's kind of how, <laughs> that's how a Tesla is it's not the, it's not the same kind of car as all the other ones but yeah cap ships um, I mean I'd like to see them reworked um, I just I just don't like the the current um, you know the current paradigm of having to use one. The only thing that I really use mine for is to, to you know, quick and free repairs whenever we're doing fights. And then go AFK and B8 with it. Yeah, I mean, pretty, yeah, pretty much. AKA leaving it as target practice for wash. Or meow. Remember when um, Mayow used to kill Nihilus's um, cap ship and just brag on it, brag about it, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, killing Dar's trident isn't like, you know, anything that's skill based because, yeah, half the time he just leaves it sitting there and he's not anywhere near his computer. I will tell you a funny story. I killed Arb's trident one day in Ukari A10 and he had been he was AFK and had the sound off because he was watching a movie but he was like keeping the sector active but, like I came out of Inatros and it was just sitting there so like I de-shielded it and I ran back into Inatros and then I came back out and he was just still sitting there and had moved so I just kept hammering on it and hammering on it and hammering on it until it blew up. And then like five minutes after I blew it up, he posted one heart. He goes, and that kid is why you don't go AFK with the sound off. Hmm. Who's that? 
Arf. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Okay, oh, right. so our yeah, our conversation is starting to slow down. We should probably bring up the uh, last stuff on our notes, which it would be turret bot. Yes, yes, because there seems to be a huge misunderstanding about what a turret bot is. It's mostly, I think, the word bot that confuses people. Um, so let's, um, I want to hear what all, all you people that are actually in chat think that a turret bot is, and then I will tell you what's actually involved in it, so that you can see how wrong probably most of you are. Um... A bot that will automatically target any person that you choose to fire on. Anyone else? At first, I thought it was a legitimate bot. You could just. I think I could probably. Uh, I think I could probably answer accurately. All right. I'll just let uh, anyone else chime in if they want. All right. Um, what was the question? I just think it's um, it's basically another account that you have that's that's connected to with um, a plugin. I mean, I do have, have one suggestion about turret bots. I wouldn't say like we'll basically stop them from being used, but maybe instead, say someone like no offense, Wash or Adog camping in I sixteen. Instead of you would lose standing for killing Wash's dent, and you'd lose standing for each of those bots that you killed, you wouldn't lose standing for anyone in the turret seat. Actually, that's the way it actually works is like if Wash shoots first, uh, there's a self defense uh, flag that gets transferred. It doesn't matter if it's his, if his uh, uh, gunners uh, shoot you first. Um, that self-defense flag actually does transfer to him and so you can kill him and any of his bots um is for that 15 minutes and you will not lose standing i mean i get that but you have to keep suicide and suiciding you know what i'm saying and it'd just be a waste of money uh, what i'm saying is you could kill him but you wouldn't lose as much standing well if he shoots first then there's no issue with you mentioned is i16 if if he shoots first then there is no standing loss at, at he all typically so you're not... doesn't fire first typically he just sits there uh, well okay you have me confused with someone else because i'm never in i16 unless i'm flying through the dial to get more ultra charges for for the one of the shops you I were really... there a couple weeks ago uh yeah i think you were for one was little I? thing Oh, we were, oh, yeah, we were, yeah, okay, yes, we were intercepting a Trident, that's why. We were intercepting a TG, we were on a hunt for a TGFT Trident to capture parts in it. So, yes, and then I basically, I tan kind of found you, and yeah. So, in the stations, for instance, if I have a key in my capture, and then I have uh, gunners that don't have a key, and then they shoot at the station, they could shoot without repercussion, for instance. Uh, the turrets won't fire. I won't get a, a flag. Nothing. That uh, stretches to the players and the turrets themselves. Oh, really? Yes, really. Well, I'm going to test that out. Originally discovered by Tanya. Really? Well, that's interesting. Just okay. Saying, just saying it here. Hope that it'll get fixed. Okay. So, um, yeah. So let's let let's let's throw some factual stuff out. There is no way that tort bots will ever be eliminated, and here is why. Pretty hard to do it because you at that point would have to either a 
eliminate all player accounts, or B, completely get rid of the Lua API interface for the game. And even then, it can do it by Python. And e yeah, even then, you can still do it with yeah, like you could you could code it in something outside of the game and 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 make the client run it. Yes. So th this whole this whole delusion about banning bots is, you know, like it works yeah. on spotter bots because spotter bots perform, you know, certain actions that are easily not identified. player like. They're not player like. And here's the thing. What, what needs what really needs to happen is that you know uh, any any type of activity that can that people start botting, it needs to be made so that such that th that botting activity is obsolete, right? So it's not even worth doing anymore because there's a better way to do that. So uh, it's like you said, you can't really ban turret bots. So just make them obsolete and kind of build that into the game, well, which, which is what he's of, doing. Right. That's that's what I was gonna say. It's kind of part of the part of the. Part of the plan i think what uh what might go a long way is if there was a uh complete packaged uh turret bot plugin that was released on uh the, the plugin website yeah and just one that everybody kind of signs off on everybody's like yeah this is this is a good one kind of like uh you know yeah everyone agrees on it basically yeah. okay yeah. Here, here, here's here's the downside to that, or here's why that won't actually work. Because um, I have thought about releasing everything that I use for mine. The problem is, is that it ties into. Um, I use a special version of the MDI target list that we modified for SWA, because it does other things other than. Um, other than what the, the regular MDI target well, list does. Yeah, no, I'm not even that's, talking about that. And that's that's you yours. That's, your... that's the final step in my turret bot setup. The rest of it is literally auto accepting invites. Literally, everything else is done with with a with a group. I mean that's that's how I do it. Literally, I send an invite. Um, all my gunners accept the invite. They join the group. It's like an auto thing because I'm too lazy to lean over and type all that shit. And that's the most automated part of it. Everything else is all done via group control. Like I do the same thing when we're training noobs. I put them in the group and I send the same commands that I send to my to, to my to my uh, gunners. So that they're shooting the same thing that that I'm shooting. I mean, it's literally that simple. If I could do it, if I could do the targeting part of it without all my customized SWA stuff, I would totally just put it in a package and release it. But it doesn't. It's kind of integrated with how MDI works, and I don't know that it would work with with like targetless, which is what everybody else, the majority of people use. And I don't know that I could actually integrate it into that. Well, the, yeah. Well, the, anyway, and anyway, the details of like how the plugin. That's not. We could we could get together a plugin that we could release. That's a that's a different kind of. I'm just saying, you know, um, that's kind of what I think would kind of uh, ease people, regardless of what that plugin is. If we do release a plugin like that, I think that would kind of make a lot of people feel better. I mean, it's literally all it is is shared targeting information. I mean, that plugin's been around for forever. That's oh, literally Wash, all it is. Wash, are you going to show the video of you using your um, your turret bots? Um, I can do that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You should probably show that. Um, yeah, I mean, okay. it, it's it's stupid. I, I run the same exact plugin, except I don't use my, my stuff. Doesn't send its information to group chat. It actually sends it to a number channel that no one should ha have the number to. So then people don't get interrupted by my group targeting. His channel number is sixty nine sixty nine sixty nine. Just saying. <laughs> uh, let's see when we find it. Hold on a second. I do have what, one what, what, more idea. Okay. It kind of would be a cap ship idea. Introduce a new cap ship 
hear, hear me out. But instead of it being a main cargo hauler, it would be more focused on combat. Yeah, yeah those are common, dude. Yeah. Wait, wait no, that's, that's basically the idea behind uh, gunships and uh, corvettes. And that's what I'm thinking. Uh, like, release a smaller version of, say, a Goliath or I don't. Yeah, they're supposed to be with like maybe a hundred CU, but a a tinier shield. Yeah, they're supposed to be variants coming. It's just you know, there's only two of them working on the game, so we got to give them time. I mean, they get it. They know they know what needs to be done. You just got to give them time to do it. That's all. Yeah, and there's like there's like longer term things that you know that 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 will that will be a reality, and then there are things that like you know we can collectively do to kind of. Yeah, like, I mean, and kind of even said, they literally had to rewrite the fucking game engine to do some of the stuff that they're wanting to do for this next gen- next incarnation of the universe. You know, with the with the dynamic trade and the, and the, and the player manufacturable stations and blah, you know. He literally said they had to rewrite the entire engine from scratch to be able to do some of the shit that, that they want to be able to do. And that shit takes a lot of time. And for it, especially for it to be transparent to us, as the players that are playing every fucking day. So, oh, here it is. Okay. All right. So, all right. Hold on. I'm going to run this video. So, anybody that's watching the live stream, um, this is, this is me running uh, my air quote turret box. Mm-hmm. So, it's literally, I just put in one command that invites them uh, as a gunner and to the group, and then they auto accept because I have the code written to auto accept anything from me. I launch, I send the enter turret command to all of them, which is what you're seeing right now. And you, I mean, you can see a list of all my gunners, a secret to any. That's literally, it just scrolls through a list and goes, tells them each to go into their turret number. I mean, that's literally all it does. And that's 99% of what it does. So you can see over there on the right, they're in my group. And that's what that first command does. It invites them as the gunner and then invites them into the group, which they auto accept because it's for me. Um, and you can actually, actually, you know what? I didn't realize you could probably do this with that. Uh, uh, that automation plugin that I put up a couple of years back. I didn't think about that. You probably do it with that too. I didn't think about it. I'll have to look at that. Okay, so now this. So here I am jumping into a bus. And now this is a modified version of. Um, uh, the MDI target list that we modified for SWA because it does other things. Um, but it is integrated with uh, sending the targeting commands to the group when I enable that part. And then the gunners just read the targeting information from the group and that's their target. I mean, that's it. That's all there is. I mean, it's uh, it's nothing complicated. I mean, I think it literally, I spent, I spent 20 minutes, I think, debugging how to do this, and that was which server was sending the freaking gunner and group, and that was literally the hardest part. Oh, mentions, uh, shields are down. It's dying fast. So, yeah, there's... There's what it looks like when I run gunners. I mean, it's literally that simple. I mean, it's, I know a lot of people make a big deal about it, but I mean, it's kind of how the ship was meant to be used with four turrets, you know, at the but same the, time. I should, we should also say that while the turrets, you know, it might make it slightly easier. If I had four players manning those, 
uh, turrets, I'd be so much more effective. Four competent players, and oh, yeah. I can actually take new. I can take new players, and I can train them how to do this. And they'd, if, if say I had four um, rail guns, and they were being manned by four actual players, I would be pretty devastating. More devastating than I could ever be with any of these bots. That that is very true. I think Black just saw how you know how effective you know the the newts are on on the turret on the um <laughs> dent. Yeah, and what that's what's funny is everybody this the neutron turret is the most devastating turret, and it's the default one that you get. No, nobody gets that. Uh, yeah, myself with another player and who's going to go unnamed, we actually, using a single moth, were able to de-shield and destroy Akani with just the new turrets and some megapods on the um, on the moth. The new turret is highly effective if you use it correctly. Hey, hey Jack, can I get that Samo? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can have the Samo. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the that's the turret bots and how they work. Um, I mean it's literally that easy. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm betting, I think I'm pretty sure that fucking auto, that rem, the remote control, that's what it was. The remote control plugin I wrote would probably do all that. Yeah, actually, it should. I just want to say one any... thing. Go ahead. Okay, I'll just say that if anyone wants to experience, you know, how I do a Leviathan sometime, just give me a heads up. I will stick four of you players in it, and you can see exactly what what I'm doing. You can see exactly how effective it is. I'm willing to share this with you know, you know, you know, share my own experiences with anyone. Just send me a message on Discord or in game, and I'll invite you, and you 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 get yourself a quick, easy Leviathan kill. I, I think I just did number ninety of of my own, so. And on this character, I have like now ninety Leviathan kills. Yeah, need turrets against the Levi are crushing. It's like I I don't get how people are still trying to make Avalons work or swarms work. I don't get it. So I much faster with needs. I, doing a solo run with Avalons is wonderfully satisfying. It, it's it, because. Especially if the um, the Leviathan's spinning around, because you have to figure out where it's going to be in two minutes, and yeah, so it's uh, just for the it's just for the challenge of it. It is fun. That's how oh. I was originally taught. Avalons. Yeah, see that whole Avalon thing. As soon as I saw it in, in the first time I saw it work, I went fuck that. That is way too much work. Yeah, uh, same. For for solo, nothing beats the 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 Avalon because nothing else can do with solo. If you're gonna have more people, then you bring out the um, the chaos swarms and the uh, and a spam rag because all you need at that point, if your if your stack is good, I believe you can do it with three players and rags. Um, it's four. I'm pretty sure we've done it with three. Yeah, we have done it with three. Yeah, yeah. me me and Doug and Jack did it with with three of us. Uh, you really need to understand. You, you need to understand that with once all the queens are dead, the, it, sometimes the NPCs are also shooting the um, Leviathan at the same time. And if there's enough of them there, you can you can kill. Actually, if there's enough of them there, the NPCs will actually just shield and kill the Leviathan for you. And that, I mean, this is off the top of a cap ship, so I guess the Leviathan is a cap ship, kind of. Um, but if you got people on the jump in vector for what the bots use, you got them L mining the NPC, the uh, enemy NPCs, then the uh, friendly pin from friendly NPCs will have um, will be more alive and will go right to the Leviathan, and they will rip it apart. 
yeah, let let get the game to play for you. That's that's the trick. Work smarter, not harder. Mm-hmm. The style of EO. Well, I think we're wrapping up right now. It's I think we've covered everything we wanted to talk to uh, today. Yeah, yeah, I think we did. And no one really had to listen to my uh, keyboard today because I took steps and measures. Brought to you by Push the Top. Yeah, well, we got to listen to washes. <laughs> yeah, well, mine's actually that was, louder. That um, was sarcasm. Like, <laughs> And when you were typing and invite me to give me the damn rolls, I could literally hear it. That's because we use gaming mechanical keyboards. Yeah, oh, I why? got. My, mine's not mine's got blue. My, I got blue switches. If I had brown switches, it'd be a heck of a lot quieter. Yeah, I've this got is reds. mine. Yeah, mine's mine are all reds too. I, I, I touch I touch type, so I require the that that loudness. I got a cheap little but, K120. I'm just going to say one thing. You guys missed it last year. Literally, it was... How long were we fighting? It was... I think eight, eight hours. Just non-stop take, taking and losing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we had like a three hundred kills. Wow. I mean, there was a battle like what two months ago up in uh, the Deneb area after um after people got cranky with uh well me and then watched at the later point uh, later point using uh our turret bots in, in Deneb and then it all ended up right there on the border and we fought for like what like eight hours or something. We were literally fighting long. from what it was like from when. Probably like 8 p.m. Eastern time to like 6 p.m. 6 a.m. All and right. We were well, just, just going at it. Go ahead and wrap this up. I um, for, oh, let's go. Well, thank everybody for coming out, participating. Um, hope everybody that's watching the live stream enjoyed it. Um, we'll post uh, info on next week's as soon as I flip a coin and figure out what we're going to talk about. So till then, thanks everyone for joining us and we will see you next time.